What's up, Brian Song here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, in our first order of business, we talked about the iOS 5 battery issues last week, and Apple has now released the iOS 5 update to the public, so if you haven't done it already, on your device, you can jump into your settings, and then general, then software update, and you won't even have to plug it in if you have enough battery life the issue it's meant to fix. It's all done over the air in iOS 5, so check that out. Now, big news dropped when Adobe announced it's completely stopping development for Flash on mobile browsers. Instead, Adobe will focus on mobile apps and implementing Adobe Air with them, increasing their investments and supporting HTML5. Steve Jobs had such a strong stance on Flash, but it didn't fail entirely because Apple never supported it. It really failed in the mobile space because even to this day, it didn't work that well with the hit or miss experience. It didn't support the touch screens and the open standards for mobile devices, and HTML5 adoption continues to grow. Now you can bet somewhere SJ is smiling or he's peering deep into our soul saying, I told you so. Now we always like to look at what might be coming in the future of Apple devices, and Patently Apple has posted some of the latest Apple patents that have been published. Digitimes reported that Big A was looking into using a dual LED light bar design for the iPad 3 to maintain the brightness of the reported higher res display that will be used. Now, one of the Apple patents describes the use of multiple OLED backlights not only in the design of the iPad, but in Apple's other products like the iPhone, cinema displays, MacBooks, and iMacs. Now, there was also a patent revealed for implementing a speaker on the clip of the iPod Nano as well. It would be a small integrated piezo electric speaker that could be a nice addition for listening without headphones or even used in voice control features. And in something that we could actually use on our current devices, one of the new patent filings also proposes new gestures that could be used for smaller screens. The answer could be a hold then swipe gesture and a swipe then hold gesture. It would be able to determine the speed of the swipe, it could be used to cycle through objects or clusters of information, and the filing also describes how you could vary the speed by tilting the orientation of the screen. Now we know patents are no guarantee that we'll see all these things implemented, but a simple gesture like this might see its way into future devices. All right, let's stick with iOS 5, and here's a tip that lets you take full advantage of the Reminders app. Brian Tong here with CNET.com, and if you're using iOS 5, one of the additions is the Reminders app. It could be super helpful, but we're going to show you how to make it even more helpful by sharing your Reminders list with a friend or loved one. Now, to get started, you'll need a few things. A device that's running iOS 5, you'll need to set up a free iCloud account with Apple, and you'll also need a computer. Now, most of the time, reminders are created when we're on the go, so let's jump into the Reminders app on our phone, and on the top left-hand corner, click on the icon that will allow you to create different reminder lists. It could be anything from groceries to your upcoming vacation, but I'm going to add another list for a dinner party. Then we'll jump into that specific list and add a few reminders, because who doesn't like a little Cabernet and candles for a dinner date? Yeah. Now, once we put in a few things, let's go to our computer and log into iCloud.com with our free account we've already created. We'll get access to our calendar, and in the left-hand column, you'll see our reminder list. We can see our dinner party list, and there's a sharing icon next to it. Click on it, and it will prompt you to add a person to share the reminder list with. They will also need their own free iCloud account, but once you enter in their email address and click share, they'll receive an email to join the reminders list. Once they accept, they'll be able to view and edit the reminder list and it will be shared between two people that really care about each other. Raincoat. So there you have it. I'm Brian Tong for CNET.com and there's your how-to for sharing your reminders in iOS 5. Use it wisely. So you guys, I told you, that guy is really smart. Now, there's plenty of other secrets in iOS 5, and there are two hidden features that aren't public, but can be accessed with a little tweaking. There's a hidden camera panorama mode built into the camera app that jailbreakers have found, but Apple is yet to make it available to users. It's a pretty simple interface, and yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's there, but there are plenty of better apps that are a buck or two on the App Store. Now, the other secret in iOS 5 is that it's also hiding an autocorrect keyboard bar similar to Android. You can get access to it by backing up your device through a separate app called iBackupBot and then reloading it from that app and then adding some code. It's really not worth it to me, but it might be worth it for you. Bottom line, these two features exist in iOS 5 and we might see them down the road. Now, something we won't see is Siri on phones like the iPhone 4 and the 3GS. Developers have been able to successfully port Siri onto both phones, and everyone can't wait for Apple to make it happen, but the fruit company pretty much shot down any hopes that it would with the response, Siri only works on iPhone 4S, and we currently have no plans to support older devices. 
Now, developer Ryan Petrick admits there were some quality issues on the 3GS, but let's be honest, Apple's never gonna let this happen, especially when MMS was only available on the 3GS, and especially when Siri is one of the main features they're touting for the 4S. All right, to the quick bites, and with Tim Cook at the helm, Apple opened up a program to match charitable donations by employees for up to $10,000 per employee. Now, up to this point, Apple's worker bees have donated $1.3 million, and the queen bee has matched that for a total of $2.6 million in donations since mid-September, which is amazing and deserves major kudos. You know, it's something I thought I'd never see, just like I thought I'd never see this. See, now that, that is amazing, and check out the guy at 148. You know what I'm talking about. All right, Steve Jobs' impact is still being felt, and he was recently nominated for Time Magazine's Person of the Year. In his biography, SJ believed he was going to be Time's Man of the Year in 1982 when the magazine went for the computer instead. If he wins, he would be the first person to receive the award posthumously. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks for watching. You guys can email us at theapplebite at cnet.com. I'm Brian Tong, and we'll see you guys next week for another bite of the apple.